Welcome back to Master Tech and in today's video I'm going to show you how to build your own Arduino LED cube. I've wanted to make an Arduino LED cube tutorial video. Basically, since I got an Arduino, I started messing around with home robotics. It's a really cool, very fun project, and it's actually very beginner friendly too. There's not a lot of advanced parts. There's not a lot of advanced electronic concepts going on. It takes a little while to assemble, but actually a lot of the videos online that I've seen that claim to be DIY do a pretty bad job of explaining what you actually need versus kind of what you can do optionally to make it better. I literally assembled mine in a shoebox with a breadboard. So you don't need a bunch of fancy stuff, you don't need a custom PCB, you don't need a bunch of tools or drills. Essentially all you need to make a 4x4x4 Arduino LED cube is 64 LED lights. That one should be pretty obvious. A total of four resistors around 220 ohms in value. This is to get the current down to the proper level for your LEDs. And you only need one resistor per horizontal layer. And then you need an Arduino with at least 20 total input output channels. So an Arduino Nano is actually fine because even though it only has zero to 13 for digital channels, you can use any analog channel on an Arduino as a digital channel. So if you have an Arduino Nano, that's fine. Obviously an Arduino Mega is fine, but an Arduino Nano works just fine and that's what I'll use in this video. And then you need a bunch of spare wire. You can use a pretty small gauge like 20, 22, even smaller is fine. And you'll need a soldering kit and you'll probably want a large breadboard or you can get like one of those big green prototyping hobby boards. Let's take a quick look at the actual physical construction of one of these cubes. It's not too bad. The basic concept of an Arduino LED cube is that you can control any one of your individual lights using a fraction of the total outputs because you can control it just by having each column and each layer. So for a cube of 64 total lights, which is four times four times four, you can actually control any light turning on or off individually with just 20 outputs, one per column and then one per layer. And to assemble your layers, you need the positive legs of each of your LEDs in each horizontal layer to be connected to each other. You can actually just bend the positive legs in a sort of an M or W sequence to be directly connected from one to the next and and then solder them together. Also, I know it's spelled solder. I know most of the world says solder, but I'm in the US and we say solder, so that's what we're going with. However you do it, the end goal is that you need every positive leg of each horizontal layer to be connected so that when you put your voltage on this layer, make sure it goes through a resistor so that you don't create a short. But when you put voltage on this layer, if you connect any individual negative leg of a light to ground, then you'll get your light to light up. So you need to create create four of these layers. It's a good idea to test each light individually before you assemble it because it's much easier to fix a bad LED in this stage than it's going to be in the next stage. And then for the actual column assembly, this is a bit trickier. There's really no way around this. You need to strip extra lengths of wire and you're just going to have to solder each of your, of your columns negative leads to each wire so that in total you have 16 vertical wires connected to each negative lead of each LED. This way, once you're finished, you have this four by four by four cube where by touching power to any of your horizontal layers and then ground to the columns, you can make every individual light in your cube turn on. The final step in the physical assembly is you need to solder wires to the underside of your cube on each column back to a digital channel on your Arduino and then one additional wire for each horizontal layer, again, back to a channel on your Arduino. You can use any channel for any pin, but you need to make sure you have the order kind of readily available for when we get to the code so that you can make sequences do things intentionally. Again, make sure that the wires for each horizontal layer go through a resistor. But this should make it pretty clear, there's actually not a ton going on electrically. Really no advanced concepts that you need to memorize here. Okay, so that's really it for physical assembly. Now let's take a look at the few basic things that you need to know for your code. The initialization area before your setup and loop areas of your sketch are just the places in your code where you define initial variables. And for this entire build, all we really need is a list of all the pins that your columns are connected to, and then create a second list for your layers.
layers. And the last thing I put in here is just an additional time variable so that if I want to change the delay between certain steps later on in my program, I can just change this variable and re-upload the program. Now the setup area of the code, which just runs once at the very beginning, is also pretty simple. You're basically just looking at two for loops, one that is going to iterate through every pin of your columns list and another that's going to iterate through every pin of your layers list and it's going to set every pin equal to a digital output. So this is telling the Arduino, even though some of those are going to be on analog channels, they're all operating as digital outputs. We're not reading anything into this build, we're just controlling points. And the last thing to do in your setup code is if you want any element of randomness in any of your sequences that you're gonna have your cube do, then you wanna add this random seed code right here. That's going to allow you to call upon a random number generation later on when we get into the loop area. And so for the loop area of the code, this is actually where you as the programmer are gonna spend the most time because this is where you get to sort of choose the sequence of things that your cube is going to do. So for mine, I used a combination of functions I found online that other people did and some basic ones that I slapped together myself. But really all you need to understand in the loop area of the code is that to get it clean and easy to debug and easy to read, the best thing you can do is sort of list out each function that you want it to do as a sub function and then that way you can define the individual light commands turning on and off in these cleaner sub functions. So essentially turn everything on, turn everything off, wait, that's a delay, flicker on, flicker off, propeller motion, up and down in layers, all these things. And to be honest, I'm just one of many creators who are leaving these programs online in publicly available GitHubs. So if you need a little inspiration or if you saw a project that you thought was really cool, just check out the code for it. And then if you have any questions about what you're seeing in either my code or another one that you found online, let me know about in the comments below. The most basic thing to understand is that to get an LED to turn on anywhere in your cube, that layer has to be on, which is equal to a one, which is saying pass five volts through that pin. And the column for that LED has to be off, which is a zero, which is saying connect that pin effectively to ground or don't pass voltage through it. Because to get an LED to turn on, the positive leg has to have voltage present and the negative leg has to not have voltage present because voltage current can only flow one way through an LED. That's kind of the point of a diode. So again, my code will be available from a GitHub link in the description of this video. You can type in 4x4x4 LED cube code and there are gonna be a dozen GitHub links. Uh, tons of people have done stuff, I'm sure, cooler than mine. I wanted to focus on making this as informational, educational, and helpful as possible. So I'm not gonna spend too long going through each of the sub functions in my code, because honestly, it's just combinations of turning layers on and columns off when you want a light on, and then turning layers off and columns on when you want a light off. So from an electrical standpoint, it's about as straightforward as it gets. From a code standpoint, it can go from as simple as you want to as advanced as you want, just based on how much time you wanna spend as the programmer on this build. So I really hope this video was informative, educational. I hope it helped you. If you still have any questions about an Arduino LED cube, how to build it, why yours isn't working, weird things you found in the code, just let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a ton. All the support on YouTube's been great. A massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. I uh, could not have the channel to the size it is now without you guys. So if you love the content on the channel, consider becoming a super supporter of the channel at that link also in the description of this video. Good luck with your projects. Thanks for watching and until next time,